Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome to YouTube. My name is C-Raptor and today we are continuing our first look series at the new German battleship Split. Maybe they're battlecruisers, maybe they're not. I guess by the German definition of the word they are. Whatever, either, either way, whatever the case is, this is Tier 7's Prinz Heinrich. Now, we've done two videos so far on Tier 5's Dörflinge and Tier 6's Mackenzen, and the differences between those two ships were pretty minor. The biggest, probably, change, um, really, uh, besides gun caliber, is that uh, Mackenzen gained access to Hydro. As you move from 5 to 6, you got access to really good um, Hydro for Tier 6. 5.5 kilometer Hydro at Tier 6. Not even the German cruiser line gets Hydro like that at Tier 6. So that's kind of nice. So we'll have to see what else um, Prince Heinrich adds to the mix as we continue on up the line here. But I do got to say before we get too much farther, this ship just looks gorgeous, right? Just look at the lines on this thing, man. These, these ships, if nothing else, these ships are just very, very, very pretty to look at. Kind of that, I mean, she's definitely got the British style of battleship, right? This kind of low freeboard look to her. Still with the casemate secondaries. Still going that way. Look at that. Anyway, let's have a look around. As we always do, starting with the top with survivability, hit points, 56,300. Now, if I'm really honest, this is not something to get super excited about. It's not, it's not worse in tier because Strasbourg still claims that uh, tier 7 premium French battleship Strasbourg um, with 52 and change. Uh, Strasbourg is essentially an up tier Dunkirk, so it's not all that shocking that she kind of comes in a little on the low side. But but if you if you if you take if you take Strasbourg if you take the French out of the equation right because Strasbourg and Lyon basically run away with the crown for worst in tier battleship health, Prince Heinrich here is not too far ahead of them right. Um, next kind of worst up the tier is uh, tier five's uh, Francesco Carnacciolo that's the Italian tier seven battleship, um, and then um, Scharnhorst here and Pr and Prince Heinrich both coming in at fifty six thousand three hundred so definitely on the low end not worse than tier but probably in the bottom i'd say certainly the bottom the bottom quarter of uh, of, of health pool for the for tier seven so that's not very exciting um i'll have to see what else the ship gets to hopefully balance this out a bit 21 percent torpedo protection again nothing to get really excited about here um best in tier is actually double this that's again the aforementioned francesco caracciolo coming in at 42 percent um several of the american ships i'm looking at you colorado and california have 35 uh well over 30 uh, th sorry well over 30 percent 35 percent for california 37 percent for colorado so there's a lot of ships in the 20 to 25 range you're thoroughly average here that's that's basically what i'd say you're average Armor layout. Now, if you remember from um, uh, Tier 5 uh, Dufflinger and Tier 6 McKenzie, we had kind of this bow straight came all the way to the bow. I, it was it was pretty beefy. I think it was 100 millimeters on Dufflinger. It's down to, it was down to 60 millimeters on McKenzie. Here on Prince Heinrich, it is all the way down to 30 millimeters all the way to the bow. The remainder of the bow extremities are 25 millimeters. So this is a little disappointing. Uh, it means that there are battleships in her matchmaking tier that should be able to start overmatching her bow. Um, that's going to feel kind of bad. Uh, we'll just have to see how this plays out. There's certainly, I mean, certainly, you know, you're going to start running into tier nine battleships. You will run into the odd Musashi, of course, um, which pretty much won't matter what, what ship you're driving. Um, but yeah, so um, not encouraging, a little less encouraging here. However, as you start to give them an angle, that plate graduates up to 120 millimeters. Like we did, so we have seen this again on the five and the six. So that's nice to see if you can get those shells to land here. You're at least protecting the forward barbette, the forward magazine. Belt graduates all the way up to 300 mils, just like we saw on McKenzie. 270 here on uh, the, the, the belt just above the waterline. So that's not too shabby. Uh, 150 on the casemate, 50 millimeters on uh, the deck here below the superstructure. Uh, 25 millimeter decks, deck ends, and so on and so forth. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's not an amazing armor scheme, but it's fairly robust. She's actually going to handle battleship armor, uh, battleship shells far better than you would expect, I think, with that belt armor, particularly once you get a decent angle on her. Let's uh, peel away some of the layers, have a look at the Le Citadel, huh? All right, so there's the Citadel. Let's have a look. She have a turtle back. She does not. No turtle back here. Just like uh, just like McKenzie, I think had the same problem. Um, so you don't, it's it's not hidden in the casemate. There's just just there's the I'll turn off the barbettes. Just there's the citadel. It is fairly sunken. That's nice to see. She should be relatively challenging to citadel with this citadel. And it does look like it's a bit spaced. Yep, just like we've seen on the other ships. There's a decent gap in here between the belt and the actual citadel wall. So you've got that going for you, but no turtle back here that would kind of uh, quote unquote promote brawling or at least encourage brawling you just got to deal with this 270 millimeter uh casemate uh casemate armor here just above the waterline turn everything back on 
shut that down. All right, keep going. Maneuverability and concealment. 28 knots of speed. I mean, it's not bad. It's not bad. It certainly isn't best in tier. Ganize now <laughs> in the tech tree. The other tech tree line still runs away from this thing at 32 knots. Hood, 32 knots. Uh, even Poltava, 30 and change. But I will say this. It's it's a little... Well, I, I, part of me wants to say it's on the high end, but it's really kind of not. It's really kind of not. There's a lot of, there's a lot of ships in the high 20s, right? I mean... Um, KG5, Caracciolo, like so many of these, there's a ton, a ton of high 20s. So again, the speed here, fairly average, nothing to get too excited about. Um, turning circle, 810 meters, absolutely very, very average. This is typical of most tier 7 battleships. Um, 810, 800, 790, 780, 770, lots of those numbers, nothing stands out here. Um, and then 14 and a half on the rudder shift time. I mean, again, uh, yeah, thoroughly average. Nothing to get uh, too too excited about. So so yeah, maneuverability. I'd say like many other tier seven battleships, nothing really stands out here. Now the tier five and the tier six absolutely stood out in their stealth. Does Heinrich continue this trend? Well, you see here, fully naked, fifteen kilometers on the surface. A full stealth rig, Prince Heinrich, will get down to thirteen point one kilometers. Is that above average? Yes. Is it best in tier? It is not. It is not. Um, Yukon still kind of runs away with this title, um, followed closely by California and Poltava and Florida. But this is not. This is this is well above average, right? This is well above average. There's a lot of there's a lot of T7 battleships that clock in in the the 8, you know, the high 13s, and so on and so forth. Um, but there are some tech tree battleships that are still stealthier than this. So I would not call it a huge advantage of the ship. Not anymore. It definitely was for the tier five and six, but here at tier seven, definitely not a huge, huge, huge advantage. Um, something you can maximize. Uh, there aren't many tier seven heavy cruisers you're going to run into that uh, that you that outs that uh, you will outspot. Uh, in fact, I think the worst is probably Algerie, and even she's like or, or York, and they're like twelve and two, twelve point two. So yeah, I don't think you can. I don't think you can outspot even uh, any cruisers in your matchmaking bracket. I mean, other than like maybe some of the super cruisers, some of the crazy super cruisers up at tier nine when you're bottom tier, you might outspot those guys. But yeah, have fun tangling with one of those in this thing. Um, all right, so what are we really here for? Let's talk about the guns. Main battery. Now, at first look, this might look like the same guns on Ganiza now, and kind of yes, kind of no. They are 380 millimeter guns. That is the same type of gun as on Ganiza now. However. What's different is that this is a different version of the gun. You see there are 45 calibers, LC-1913. The guns on, and even the turret design, I don't know if you, if you, if you know, if you know Ganiza now, you can look at these turrets. This turret design is quite different than what uh, Ganiza now mounts. So this is an older version of the German 15-inch guns. Um, Heinrich mounts two turrets, two double turrets forward and two double turrets aft. So she brings more guns to the fight than Gneisenau. now. That's, that's nice to see. The reload is actually worse because of it, right? She gets a 29 second reload versus Gneisenau's now's 26. Um, range is also worse, 17.4 versus Gneisenau's now's 19.5. In fact, her main battery range of 17.4 is very, very nearly worse in tier. Again, the Italians come in a little worse. Yukon absolutely comes in worse. Yukon has basically cruiser range. This is, there aren't, this is very. This is on the low end for a battleship and on the high end for a heavy cruiser. So you're kind of in the middle, let's say, right? Algeria's range is about like this. York's main battery range is about like this. Um, so eh, you're not getting battleship range. You are getting battleship guns. You're getting battleship survivability, but you got to drive closer to the enemy to to kind of get your guns to action than most most other tier seven battleships. The overwhelming majority other tier seven battleships okay all right what else have these shells got going for them well these are these aren't quite the same shells they aren't quite the same barrels okay if you're used to playing Ganiza now you're used to getting i mean that's just been around what five years now five six years um you're, you should probably be very comfortable with the performance of those guns these guns look on paper again i haven't played the ship look like they're going to perform a little differently for starters the shell damage doesn't match up okay Ganiza now's he shells hit a little less hard her ap shells hit a little harder um, in terms of just raw damage out of the shell. And then the shell velocities are different. Um, Prince Heinrich here, 800 meters per second out of the barrel. Gneisen now, I believe, I looked earlier, I think it was 815 or 820 meters per second out of the barrel. So there's there's some subtle differences in here, even though it's the same caliber of gun, um, it's it's very clearly not going to perform exactly the same as Gneisen now. Um, 
I might, you know what I'll do? I'll in post, I'll have a look at the penetration between the two ships. I'll run a comparison. I'll put the graph up here and then I'll put a link to that down below so that you got put a link to that website in the description so you guys can go play around with that and check it out yourself. Um, we were having that conversation on the incomparable video last week. So I'll kind of ex encourage you to, if you want to, you know, you want to dive into that a little deeper, I'll put the link and you can go do that yourself. But yeah, so, um, I think the summary that I gave earlier is pretty accurate, right? You're looking at, you're getting, you're getting battleship guns, but cruiser range. So keep that in mind. Um, secondary armaments. Now we finally, finally get away from the single barrel 88s that we had at five and six. Now we're moving up to the double barrel 105s. These are outstanding little mounts. They're dual purpose mounts for AA. And they're really, really good against, uh, against destroyers. You know, these are basically four inch guns, pretty close to four inch guns anyway, a little, little over four and uh, lots of penetration out of these shells. Plenty, plenty of good damage to sh on, on lighter targets here. And so, yeah, we've got, uh, we got three of these on each side. One, two, and three complemented by these 150 millimeter guns in the casemate. She has six of these per side. So pretty robust secondary armament. What we've, what I've been seeing in the comments so far, some people who are smarter at how to data mine the game than I am have been telling me that these, these battle cruisers, uh, battleships kind of have, um, uh, Massachusetts dispersion formulas on their secondaries. That's encouraging. That's encouraging. That should be really, really good. So if you can get the secondaries to action, 6.3 kilometers, by the time you buff them out, they'll probably go up to eight and change. That's not too shabby, right? You can do some good work with this thing. Um, and, and, you know, Heinrich also has something else that encourages you to drive a little closer to the enemy. That's right. She has torpedo tubes. She's got a quad launch, yeah, quad launcher on each side of the ship, kind of buried down here. It is beneath the deck, actually fairly well protected by standards of a German battleship or a German cruiser. But yeah, she's got one of these on each side. Um, I will have a look um, at the uh, the torpedo angles. Uh, we'll put that graphic in here in post, and I need to have a check of that. I uh, I haven't thought to do that. In fact, why don't I do that right now? I'm sitting here talking about it. Torpedo tubes, torpedoes launch sector. Yeah, so it looks like you're getting about 30... It's about 35 degrees off the bow in the stern for the torpedo angles. That's not too bad, really. It's not too bad. It's not as good as we've seen out of some of the other ships of this type. Incomparable, for example, we noted, we noted the launch angles was about 30 degrees. But 35, not too shabby. Uh, probably still very, very workable. Um, what's notable about these torpedoes, though, these are not the standard German cruiser torpedoes that we would maybe expect to see. These are on a longer reload for starters because of the fourth barrel, the fourth, the fourth tube, I should say, but they have a 10 kilometer range, but only 50 knots of speed. So this is like some weird mashup between the German and the Italians, right? Longer range, but stupidly slow, hard to spot. Now, the hard to spot and the slow speed normally works together. But in this instance, it's actually a bit of a disadvantage for Prince Heinrich because normally a, a typical torpedo reaction time, when you, I've got a table in my spreadsheets where I can see all of this. The torpedo reaction time is a simple calculation, right? In terms of torpedo speed um, versus torpedo detection and how long your opponents have to react to a torpedo coming in based on those two numbers. A normal, a normal destroyer torpedo is usually in the eight second range. Usually between seven and a half and eight seconds is very typical, very common of most destroyer torpedoes. There's some outliers, of course, there always are, but that's average, okay? The German cruiser torpedoes that you normally see, um, the, uh, the G7s that, uh, that are, you know, six kilometer range and all that stuff, um, those have, are about the same way. They're about 7.9 seconds on the reaction time. But because of these, these are so slow and, and the, detection, the detection radius on the torpedo is what it is, these have about a 9.3 second uh, uh, reaction time for the enemy. So, you, I mean, I don't know how much use you're going to get out of these at long range. Like, they're really good for possibly kiting. If somebody's driving into them, they're more likely to run into one because they're closing the speed, right? In the sense of they're, the torpedo's coming at them at 50 knots. They're probably coming at the torpedo at, let's say, 20 to 25 knots. And so that's a, that's a 70 knot closure rate. Um, that's going to reduce the amount of time they have to react to the torpedo. But so if they're kiting you, yes. Or if you're charging, you know, if you if find yourself in a close brawl, these can be useful. Um, but they're not probably going to be that useful from a, for a, from a pushing perspective, unless you're really on top of somebody. I don't see that being likely. They're just, they just seem too slow. Um, a defense. Now we've been talking about in some of the prior video comments that the tier five and six a feels really bad. Um, tier seven is one thing where this is one place where Prince Heinrich actually starts to step up her game a little bit. This is not best in tier AA by any stretch of the imagination, but she does have notably more AA than the five and the six do, than Dufflinger and McKinson. So starting off, she gets she gets a lot more flak. She gets five flak puffs, 1330 a pop. This is essentially 
the same that Sharnhorst gets, okay? Uh, Sharnhorst actually gets more DPS in this ring, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but um, she gets the same flak protection. And Sharnhorst say is not awful, 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 okay? In fact, Sharnhorst is arguably a pretty decent analogy. So the outer ring for the Between the Two Ships, very, very, very close. Um, the difference is in that middle ring. Sharnhorst doesn't really have a middle ring. Most of her remaining punch is in her inner ring, um, whereas you see there, Prince Heinrich does have a middle ring on the base of the 37 millimeter single mounts. These are really, really good guns. The, the, many of the high tier German ships, the German destroyers start to mount these little 37 millimeter single or double flak mounts. These are quite good for mid range. And so Heinrich has a decent amount of punch in mid range, uh, 168 DPS. Not amazing, not amazing. You're not gonna be discouraging a carrier strike with this AA suite. Um, will you cost him some planes? You will. You will, finally. You couldn't really say that at the tier five and six. You can say it here at tier seven. He will, he will pay for a strike. Um, will it be, will it be a steep price? It won't. You're not American. <laughs> AA is still not what you do well in this, in this line. Okay. Um, but given that you're, you know, you're a little less stealthy than you used to be. This is less of a concern. Uh, in my opinion, I, I don't see this as a catastrophe. Your AA is, uh, your overall AA suite is, well, it's definitely below average for tier seven, but it's not catastrophically bad. You know, you're not, this is not how you or Ashitaka that are basically, you know, free, you know, uh, kick me sign for an opposing carrier, right? Carrier looks at one of those and goes, oh yeah, lunch. Yeah. Heinrich is a, at least a little more resilient than that, but not amazingly so. Let's go have a look at consumables and everything. Um, like we've been seeing with the line, the fast damage control team, absolutely going to be a thing. Standard battleship heal, nothing, nothing fancy here. And then that really, really good, uh, German hydro we saw starting at tier six continues here at tier seven out to five and a half kilometers of range. Um, beyond that, nothing exciting here. No aircraft facilities. Uh, we can see, of course, you've got your HE, your AP and your torpedoes and, um, yeah, not much else to talk about here. So, so there you go, guys. That's uh, a quick first look at tier sevens Prinz Heinrich. I'm, um... I'm curious about this ship. Gneisenau now and I have a very, a very up and down history in the game. I've really struggled to like that ship over the years because every now and then dispersion will absolutely troll you. But um, yeah, this ship. I mean, you're getting more barrels, but um, and, and I guess oh, I forgot to mention this when we were talking about the main battery. I should go back and talk about it. Um, I forgot to mention her Sigma. Her Sigma is really unencouraging, guys. She has a 1.5 Sigma. Um, so yeah, the dispersion ellipse looks really good. It's that battle cruiser dispersion, but again, the pattern inside of it is going to be very, very shotgunny, very inconsistent. I'm concerned about the, the 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 gunnery on these ships. I really am. I hope it's good, but we're just not used to seeing uh, dispersion ellipses and and accuracy numbers for battleships built this way. So until I try it, I have I have concerns. Let's say I just I have concerns. <laughs> anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed that. Wash your hands. Be safe. And I'll catch you next time.